Hi, I'm Nikki from Find Me Crafting. I want to let you in on a little secret. It's one of the ways I stay sane on the weekends, on summer vacation, any school breaks, any time when all four kids might be home. It's a nifty microwave potato bag. Now you might be asking yourself, what the heck is a microwave potato bag? Well, let me tell you, it's just like it sounds. It's this pouch, it's made out of all cotton, and you clean a couple potatoes, you put them inside. You put the whole thing into your microwave, and five minutes later, you have a baked potato. Now you might also say, but can't I just microwave a potato without the bag? Sure, you definitely can. If you like dried up shriveled potatoes, these are going to be moist and fluffy and perfect in less than five minutes. They're great for kids because as soon as they learn how to use a microwave, they can make a meal by themselves. These are also fantastic for shift workers. They're great for college students. They're great for grandparents maybe who are just cooking for themselves. Anybody with access to a microwave can make the perfect baked potato in five minutes. And it's such an incredibly quick sewing project that you can make one faster than you can make a conventional baked potato. Come on, I'll show you how. And if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any new patterns or projects. So here's what you're going to need for supplies. And let me start by saying that everything you use in this project has to be 100% cotton because you're going to be putting them in the microwave. And if it's any other material, it could start on fire in your microwave when it's being subjected to all that heat, but cotton will be safe. So you're going to need whatever pattern you want of 100% cotton, and you're going to cut each of your exterior pieces to 12 by 22 inches. Uh, same thing, this is what I'm gonna use for the interior. I'm just using a plain interior. This is also 100% cotton, and it's also going to be cut at 12 by 22 inches. You're also going to need some 100% cotton batting. I've already cut mine. These are also at 12 by 22 inches, each of my pieces. This is a kind that I like to use. It's called Wrap and Zap by Pellen. It is 100% uh, cotton and they actually advertise it as perfect for microwavable projects. Continuing with our 100% cotton um, the supply list is also some 100% all-purpose cotton thread for in your sewing machine. You're also going to need some sewing clips or pins. Either will work great. I like the clips better just because I hurt myself less using them, but either will work just fine. You're also going to need a cutting mat and a sewing ruler and a rotary cutter, or if you prefer, you could also just use some fabric scissors. The only other things you're going to need are an iron, an ironing board, and a sewing machine. So once you get all of your fabrics cut to 12 by 22 inches, we're going to be making a fabric sandwich. There's three components. You have your batting, you have the inside, the interior, and the exterior. And you're just going to, after you get them all ironed and pressed and looking pretty, you want to lay them out and line up all the edges. So we start with the batting, that goes on the bottom. And then you're going to lay down your lining interior piece and you want the pretty side facing up toward you. Mine doesn't really have a pretty side. I think if I was guessing this is the pretty side, but for me it doesn't matter because it looks pretty much the same. And then for your exterior piece, you want the pretty side, the right side facing down. So you're gonna have what they call rights to rights. So the pretty side and the pretty side are facing each other. And you line up all of your edges and then we're just going to pin or clip around the edges um, to hold them all in place. Uh, there is also, you need to leave about a two inch section. I prefer to do this part on the short side. So there's, there's the two long sides at the top and bottom and then the two short sides. I'm going to leave a two inch section over here on one of my short sides open. In this next step, I am not going to be sewing it and so I'm going to clip these right here. Um, that's more than two inches. That's a sizable chunk. It's fine. Two inches minimum. This is where you're going to flip it right side out. 
So that part right here, I'm not gonna sew in this next step. And I'm just reminding myself of that with these different colored clips that I've put in here. And I'm gonna just clip all the rest of it around the edges. So once you have the whole thing clipped and ready to go, I'm gonna take it to my sewing machine here and I am going to sew around all four of my edges with a 1 4th inch seam allowance. I'm gonna start right here, just past the clip that I put in where I don't wanna sew. And I'm gonna go all the way around and I'm going to stop right over here, right above this one that I've marked so that this section stays unsewed. And when you get to a corner, make sure your needle is down in the sewing project. Just lift up your pressure foot, turn it around so you're facing the direction you wanna go next. You probably could have gone a little bit closer to the edge. And then you just put it back down and resume. Make sure at the beginning and at the end here to backstitch so that you don't rip your seams out when you flip this right side out. So at this point, before I flip it right side out, I wanna clip my corners, which just means that I'm going to clip right here. Don't cut across your seam, but right next to it, you wanna do this. That reduces the amount of fabric, the bulk that's inside your bag, and it'll make the corners pop out and look more square. So to flip it right side out, all you do is find the hole that you left unsewn, and you're going to wanna to flip it right here so that you have the the exterior and the interior, they're gonna flip right here in the middle. You could technically flip it right here and that will be wrong because then your batting will be on the outside. So right here between the exterior and interior, you just start flipping it right side out. And it looks like a mess and it's okay because it's about to look really cool. So you can stick your hand inside that opening and then just press out your corners make sure everything is right side out. And what helps with this is sometimes like a pencil, a chopstick. Um, I have this pokey little stick thing. I got this stick inside a bag of, you know, polyfill of stuffing. And I use that just to get in here and I push on the corners, make sure all of my layers are poking outward. There we go. See that one was not poked out and now it is. It's a genius of this thing, but make sure you do that to all of the corners. I've got it all right side out and I am just going to press all of it with an iron to flatten out my seams a little bit and get rid of any wrinkles. Now what I want to do is get this opening that we left to flip it right side out. I want to get this prepared to be sewn shut. So I'm just going to take my edges. I'm going to grab my, my, my batting here along with it and I'm going to just roll this toward the center and I want to roll it about the same amount so that it, it is even with my other the rest of my seam so that it's even with this edge if I can so I'm just going to roll it just a tiny bit and I'm going to clip it and once I get this exterior rolled I'm going to do the same thing with the inside so now I just need to roll my interior and I want to make sure the interior is a little bit shorter than the exterior because I don't want to see it from the front and I'm just going to clip the two together now I'm going to top stitch the entire thing, which just means I'm gonna do a 1 8 inch seam all the way around. I'm gonna start right here. And as I do this, I'm gonna sew across this area that I just folded and that's gonna close the opening. And then I'm gonna continue on around and that's gonna hold all the layers together. Next, we're going to create the pocket itself. We're going to make the bag portion. So I'm gonna lay this out. I have my exterior facing up and I'm going to fold the right side here in about five inches. I'm gonna measure that, make sure I've got about five. It's right about there. And I'm going to clip this in place and I'm gonna make sure the other side is also five inches. I don't want it to be lopsided. Now I'm gonna take the other side, which, you know, if I'm holding it steady is the left side. And I want to overlap this by about an inch to an inch and a half. So I want this part to go onto this part about an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in there. And I'm going to clip it. Let's see if my clips can handle that level of fabric here. 
So I've got them clipped in place. You could add some more clips just to make sure it doesn't shift around on you. I'm just going to now sew just to the left of this seam, my top stitching seam. I'm gonna go just inside that and go down both of these sides that I've clipped right here. All that's left to do is to flip it right side out so that your exterior is on the exterior. Once again, I'm gonna poke out all the corners and I'm probably gonna use, I'm gonna use my little tool here. Oh, not the pointy end. That'll poke right through it, but I'm going to press out my corners. The only thing that you might wanna do here at the end is just take your iron and give it one good press so it looks really pretty and it is done. It's ready for use. I'll put a link in the description box down below for a free printable tag that explains how to use the potato bag and how to care for it. To use it, just clean three to four potatoes, cut off any sketchy looking bits, and put them into the bag. Place the bag in the microwave for between four and eight minutes, checking every two minutes or so. And then all you have to do is load up your potato with your favorite toppings. Let the bag air dry between cooking times and launder with no fabric softeners. Happy crafting!